Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us here on the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. My name is Louisa Havers and I help high achievers, entrepreneurs and coaches lift the lid on life and business. And we have something very special for you, our listeners today, with a training that we did recently on the Clubhouse platform. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Clubhouse, it is a social networking app where people create rooms and discuss a wide range of topics. And because it's delivered direct to your mobile device, you may notice a difference in audio quality, which we're hoping doesn't take away from your listening experience. What is important, of course, is the content that we're sharing. And I invite you to be intentional with what you wish to receive from listening today. How do you want to feel after you have listened to our session? For more information on how you can join us on future Clubhouse meetings with me, Louisa Havers, be sure to check out the show notes below and we will see you in the Clubhouse. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. I'm so excited because I have Tina Hull here with me today, and we are going to be diving into a deep conversation. Our conversation is about buried emotions and how they can lead to physical pain, illness, and disease. So you want to stay around to hear this conversation. Now, by way of introduction, I'm going to share Tina's bio so you can understand why I'm so excited that she's joined us on this podcast episode. Tina is a restorative health guide, a mindset coach, and an Akashic Record consultant. She helps women release and heal emotional wounds without having to relive them so that they are happy and connected to who they are meant to be. And she does this using her signature method called Infinitely You. Oh, I love it. (laughs) Welcome, Tina. (laughs) Thank you very much, Louisa. It's a pleasure being here. (laughs) I'm so excited for our listeners to hear your wisdom. So people can, let's start at the beginning so people can really understand a little bit of, you know, get to know you. Let's start at the beginning. What was it that led you to start your business? Oh, good question. So I was right out of university. I had um, a a job Mm -hmm. and the job was kind of toxic. Ah. And I just felt the pull to shift out of what I was doing, go into massage therapy because I knew we were planning on moving back to the Caribbean. I needed something that I could travel with as far as occupation. So then I was in massage for 20 plus years. It led to cranial sacral therapy, which led to the energy work. So it's all been kind of stacked and influenced on each other. And it's just been a building of the process and seeing all the puzzle pieces of my clients and just realizing and noticing the differences between an actual physical pain from an injury versus an emotional pain that's being held in the body that's causing physical pain. So that's been a very interesting journey and awareness, not just for them, but for me too, because I'm seeing it in real life time, Mm. which has been awesome. Yeah, Mm -hmm. (laughs) that must be just magical being able to work with your clients in that way and to be able to like you say to see it in real time yeah Um, and and I it's my nature to because I've I always come from a place of wanting to uh help and mm -hmm. heal and so when my clients come to me I'm looking for a solution I'm looking for the root cause I'm not just looking to give a coated massage and and let them go and then come, you know, let them suffer with the pain or, or come back several times when they don't need to. So I've always come up with a solution so that it's the quickest way to get them to where they need to be in order for them to be healing or healed. And then they can live. (laughs) Yes, they should. (laughs) So let's dive into this a little bit deeper. How can the emotions be released so that it doesn't cause the illness and all the pain or the, or the disease that you've been, you know, you've, you've touched on? Yeah. So a lot of it's about allowing the emotion. So emotional intelligence 
is something that has been a bit of a buzzword probably for the last four or five years. And unfortunately, along the way, we became less emotionally intelligent. We've avoided and we bury and we burst under the rug because we've had to deal with life. We've had to manage life. We've had to survive. And when we're going through those times of, of survival, we feel we don't have the energy or, or the time to actually deal with the emotions so that we can release it and let it go. So I have over the years also done that and realized that it's not a healthy way to live. And now I just allow the emotion to come to me and through me. And we're meant to, we're human beings and emotions are part of our being. And you have to have the good with the bad. It's just the way life is. So you can be emotional one minute and then you can be happy the next. Mm. So it, it doesn't have to be an either or, it can be both, but we have to allow them to come to us and through us. And when that happens, because I used to build it up and when I used to build it up, if I had a relationship issue with my husband at the time, then I would allow it to take me out of the gate mm. because it was all pent up. I hadn't dealt with it. I wasn't willing to look at it and then process it and then heal it. So now I know that's what to do. So it doesn't take me out of the game. It's just part of being and living and having relationships and being having a connection with other people that's just part of life mm. we do have to learn how to manage it I do think that there is a lots of myths out there around how we are somehow weak or less than if we allow ourselves to fully experience our emotions which isn't helpful like you were saying we've become no. unemotionally intelligent that's actually when when we um buy into or consider that that is actually you know because we want to be successful we want to be high achievers so therefore we're sort of disconnecting ourselves from allowing these emotions to bubble up mm -hmm. and somehow feeling that we're wrong for perhaps holding some trauma or um and being not fully recognizing perhaps how deep some of the emotions are affecting us because particularly if we're used to burying it it's going to get really good at hiding yes and it becomes an energy cyst. So what happens is that our bodies, it, our cells actually retain the emotion. So the, because it retains the emotion, then it develops into this energy cyst, which has an encapsulation around it. And then it, it just festers. So eventually it will rise and it will rise in some form. And sometimes it will rise in form of burnout. Uh, overwhelm anxiety sometimes it will be physical illnesses like cancer um, chronic fatigue fibromyalgia you name them in my opinion a lot of these diseases that didn't exist way back when is because we're not allowing the emotions and we're allowing it to fester inside of us and I used to think it was weak too and I don't know where I got that from because my mom never really showed a lot of emotion. Neither did my father beyond anger and laughter. <laughs> so <laughs> it's kind of that, yeah, <laughs> not much in between. So yeah. um, I think I saw my mom cry maybe one time. And unfortunately, I also did that as well. I didn't cry as much. Um, I didn't allow my girls to see me crying. And so Part of the problem also with that is when they're growing up now, are they going to be able to cry and be able to see that it's okay to cry? And also because of the personal trauma that I've gone through for the last several years, they, they have a disconnect between the person they see every day and me not being emotionally upset about what's been going on. Mm. So they don't think I care. So that's also been the backlash of me swallowing the emotions and, and trying to manage it on my own and deal with it. Because I have been crying, which is good because it's allowed that flush. Like I feel so much lighter afterwards. Mm -hmm. I can't even begin to tell you 
how much physically lighter I feel. So it's okay to cry. We're meant to cry. Yeah, it's healing. Like you say, you've had that physical release and, and you can already energetically feel lighter and, and a sense of relief from it having yeah. moved, moved through you rather than going, oh, I've just got to suck it up somehow <laughs> and bury it. I'm going to store mm-hmm. it somewhere in some cell and create yeah. a, something that's going to fester into, into something bigger. I know yeah. when we were talking earlier this this week, or was it last week, when you were sharing some of your results that your clients had had, which was just amazing. Um, if you're able to, to, to share that, I think that would be really helpful in terms of that awareness. There was a lady that you spoke about when she recognized she was picking up other people's emotions as well, not even her own. <laughs> um, and that then manifesting into, you know, a physical, a physical disease. Yeah, there, so there was a couple of them. Um, one of the ladies had come in to me, she, her aunt had referred her to me. She was mm-hmm. visiting on vacation, but she was in hopes of getting some healing. And she had been experiencing physical symptoms for years and they kept testing her. And when they were testing her, they went from, um, three or four tests for fibromyalgia. And I guess on the fourth test, it tested negative mm-hmm. and they started looking at chronic fatigue and they went through that process. And at the last test, it was negative. So I, I said to her, well, do you have interaction with people? And, and I believe she was a social worker. So she has lots of interaction with a oh, lot of yeah. low level yeah. energies mm-hmm. and emotions and a lot of fear and worry and all of that. And unfortunately, people generally don't take care of themselves. And when you're in that state, you take care of yourself even less. And so she was taking on all these physical symptoms. We had two sessions together and she was feeling so much more alive and, and free and she was out of pain and she didn't have what she was experiencing anymore. It's just amazing to see. And it, and part of it is her being an empath as well. So mm. we've got to learn to protect our energy, especially if we're helping other people. And just, it could be a simple thing as envisioning a bubble or a pyramid or a cylinder, something that's going to have this barrier between you and the other person. So you're not taking on their energy. It's okay to feel it temporarily but not to actually own it Mm. and that's what a lot of people are doing these days is is because the consciousness is shifting so much more and people's gifts are rising so much more we really do have to learn how to protect our energy because otherwise it's going to become more of a curse than than a gift absolutely and it is because when you have that awareness because obviously as you know I work very intuitively well so you're you're speaking my language is I know that when I'm feeling something I'm like oh I I check is that mine is that someone else's and and um, then I'm able to to let it go so it can be very helpful as you're working as a coach uh, okay so they've got some pain here so I know to ask some questions around you know specific emotion to do with the the hip or the kidney or whatever it may be Um, but of course if you don't know that can be absolutely terrifying you've got this whole cluster of physical symptoms that you've got no understanding as to why they're they're there I think the most powerful thing like that example you gave around when people are going from doctor to doctor and the doctors can't fathom it because there's actually not a kind of physical thing there Mm -hmm. (laughs) um it's like what what is going what is going on I remember working with a, a a lady I met at a workshop when we were doing like 20 minute sessions with people and she walked in with this this I know this will resonate with you she walked in with this hip that she'd had hip problem she'd had for years that had affected her gait and I asked her a few questions we did the healing work around it and within 20 minutes we'd we released it and healed it and she yeah. had done that I need a whole hip operation thing she didn't she was holding trapped motions in in her hip mm-hmm. and it is isn't it it's so exciting when you yeah see that and your clients get it as well yeah yeah and and I was working with uh one lady in the Akashic Records and and she was complaining of low back and I believe right hip pain. Mm-hmm. And we had pr- talked through some of the experiences she was going through. And a lot of it was holding guilt, but not making a decision yeah. and not, not being in control of the decision, feeling like she's out of control and she has to do out of obligation. And once we got into that and we released and healed that, 
she had no pain anymore. Mm -hmm. So it could be as simple as that. It, sometimes there are things because it's layered. Yeah. So um, I'm not negating that you have issues and I'm not negating that there are um, technical terms, medical terms to call these conditions mm -hmm. and diseases. And there is a solution. There is, and you don't have to live with it. I have never believed that in all of my lifetime is that you do not have to live with pain, period. And just because you've been diagnosed with something doesn't mean that it has to be it. Mm. It can be healed. It can be cured. And there's so much evidence of that out there now so much isn't it i think it's it's wonderful with that what the internet has given us with being able to well one that we can connect with people all around the world you're in, Barbados and I'm in the uk <laughs> but also our clients can find us from all the way around all, all over the world as well and being able to see the evidence on the internet when you're meeting other people that are sharing their stories and their experience um, I think I think you're absolutely right around there being a call for and an awareness around hang on I don't just have to go down to the GP route I could perhaps add some more complementary therapies onto my healing yeah. journey and and see see which lands yeah and and there's a space for modern medicine there's mm -hmm. no doubt and doctors always usually most of them come from a place of wanting to help and heal as well so I'm not saying don't go that route. I'm just saying there is an option outside of it. And if you are, I mean, I have one client, honest to God, she for 12 years couldn't walk on her own. She couldn't use a crutch or she was using a crutch or, or a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And after a second session together, she was able to walk assisted by her husband down the road. Mm -hmm. After several sessions together, she was able to walk by herself down to the pharmacy. I still have yet to find out how much of a distance that was, but it was there and back. She wow. was jumping for joy. And that's 12 years that's of incredible. being in that pain. And it, yeah. she didn't make the connection of her emotions that were trapped in her physical body. So after each session, she'd be like, oh, I didn't know I was so angry with my leg. Because what happens with chronic pain, too, is that we have a tendency to disconnect from that body part. We reject it. We get angry with it. We get whatever we're emotion we're feeling. And just like cancer and breast cancer, especially, a lot of my clients don't breathe back into the area. Mm -hmm. And so chronic pain or you have a disease and you're trying to heal breath you need to put life back into those areas and just be loving with it it didn't do it on purpose it is a clue it is a sign pain is the sign that something's wrong so we need to not not, not avoid the pain signals <laughs> when they start and i've been guilty of it so it's a human nature thing i don't know why we do it but we do and if you if you nip it in the bud at the beginning it becomes a minor thing. If you allow it to fester, it's going to become a major thing. And that might be when you actually wake up to the call. So true. And do you know what? I, I always think this and it just, I feel like it's, you know, we want to get this information into schools. If I go back to my biology lesson, mm -hmm. this would have, this knowledge that I now know as an adult, having done all the, the complement they're called complementary therapies aren't they but you know holistic therapies mm -hmm. this stuff I just feel should be in mainstream schools where kids are learning this in their biology lessons etc yeah. rather than what I learned and dissecting frogs and <laughs> <laughs> and we can do both they need yeah. to have that part of the curriculum I, I agree it's yeah and it I think it will shift and it'll change because science is backing it up mm -hmm. now. This, mm -hmm. is not, this is something you and I have known for a long time and it's just part of our knowing and so many scientists are now backing it up. There's so many books right now that are talking about the emotions because if you think about emotions, you have the, the emotion, it gets locked in, it changes the landscape of your body. It does. It affects your hormones, which then affects how things work. 
And if it's not in balance, then all of a sudden it's out of balance. And when it's out of balance, things respond and, and react differently. And it causes this cascade and trigger that will happen. And in everybody, it's different. So it's not a one cure for everybody. But the beauty of the work that we do is that it's a healing process that's connected to your mind, body, heart, and soul. And it takes care of all of it. You don't have to relive the trauma. You don't have to relive the experience. And most of the time you've buried it. So you aren't going to want to relive it because it'd be just too much. And it's a mm -hmm. safety mechanism. And so there's nothing wrong. There's no judgment around any of this. It's just, it is what it is, but we need to be aware of it so we can actually start to heal and not just accept the diagnosis. And one last thing, if I, we have time, is that <laughs> if you get a diagnosis of cancer, especially, because the C word just puts us into this huge fight and flight thing, try not to put emotion around it. It just is what it is. And when I worked with a client and we did this work, she was able to now say that it was just a blip in her experience. And she was 74 years old when she had cancer. So it's important when we're doing this, that we're not getting emotionally wrapped into it. Mm -hmm. So what does it mean? Oh my gosh, it could be this, it could be that. And we go into this downward spiral and that just makes it worse. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at why do we have it? What has been our experience over the last couple of years? They say about one and a half to three years, you can look back and that's usually where the actual trigger was from why it's been caused in the first place. So look back into your past, see what traumatic experience you were going through and start to heal that process. It could be forgiving someone else. It could be forgiving yourself. It could be working with Louisa and I to help yourself through this process. Your body can heal yourself and it's probably going to take a little bit more time, but you can get it done quicker if you work with us. Yeah, so, so true. Because I think one of the things that takes people out of the game when they that awareness comes in and they're like, okay, I know it's my thoughts that have created this. Now, where do I go? Because we all have blind spots. And of course, because of that um, safety mechanism that you spoke about, the subconscious is going to do everything it can to keep you safe. So it's going to create procrastination. It's going to create um, a feeling of fear as the emotions bubble up. And you can feel like, particularly if it's a childhood trauma, you go back to that age, you start to feel that age again, don't you? As the emotion, if whatever's happened in your environment and it suddenly triggers it, you go back, you think, oh, I don't want to go there because I suddenly feel like I'm seven or eight or however old you are again. And yeah. it's just the human way of keep trying to keep us safe. And that's where I think having somebody who does like what you do, and being able to really understand the, the, the connection between emotions and this understanding the subconscious is just so powerful because you can just get there so much more easily. And you're held in that, you're held in that safe space, aren't you? Whilst all the, the stuff comes up that you're like, oh, forgot about that. Memories right. can come through, can't they? That you've completely yes. disconnected from and um, have no memory of at all. Yeah. And, and a lot of times when we, I do this work, a lot of people have recall memories of mm -hmm. things that they thought they had healed and released and let go. And they didn't, not fully, maybe layers of it they had, but it needed, there was still some residual that was playing behind the scenes. And these things become part of our subconscious. And then because it's part of our subconscious mind, then they're the ones that are keeping us stuck and holding us back and, and debilitating us in different ways. So mind, body, heart, and soul, if we are a whole human and we have to allow all of it and we also have to heal all of it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think Tina, what you said was so powerful around really normalizing that these emotions are going to, we're going to have emotions from our interactions, not only with ourselves and our experience of life, but also with our, within our relationships with others, whether that's a, a partner, a husband, a wife, a, a father, a mother. Right. 
stuff's gonna happen and being able to allow yourself to 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 move through them and to really understand what's going on with the body is is a game changer yeah and and right now the fear that well the not fear concern i have right now is um because of the issue with ukraine and russia Mm -hmm. There's a lot of transgenerational uh, trauma that's going on right now. There's people that have either partially lived through, fully lived through, or lived through their parents' memories, all that's going on. So again, this is going to be raising its ugly head, mm -hmm. and there needs to be a process, even if you journal it the heck out of it. <laughs> It's not going to be all that you need, but it's going to help. Breathing yeah. through it is mm. going to help. Meditating, yoga, moving, being in nature as much as you possibly can, can connecting to the earth, to your spirit, to uh, your higher power is going to be so important for us going forward because there's also lots of things coming on the back end of the pandemic. And there's places already that are struggling with supply. Yeah. So that's going to put a lot of us into a fear state. So it's going to it's, be a very interesting time. Yeah, really key. Um, and I think you, you've spoken there, you know, because obviously it's not only the, the people that are living through the experience with, they're living in Russia, they're living in Ukraine, they or they've got family members there or close friends mm -hmm. there, etc. Yeah. But also as human beings, compassionate human beings, watching it on play, play out rather on the television is is very traumatic, and yeah. that can trigger, of course, as well uh, trauma memories, transgenerational trauma that you were speaking about as well. Um, and I feel called to share this, and I'm sure you, you know this will resonate as well. Is um, I remember working with a a myofascial uh, client, a, a coach who was a client of mine as well, um, and her talking about shaking as a way to release trauma, specifically right in the moment after you've seen it. So it's a way to handle the news. It's just oh. to shake it out. We see animals, don't we? We see them get rid of the fear out of their bodies right. by shaking, except for some reason we don't, we are, you know, our bodies are uh, animals, the animal vessel holding our soul that um, that technique is going to work for us as well to be able to immediately just start to shift the trauma of whatever we've just witnessed. Yeah. And again, the protective bubble can help you. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have that energy block where only love and light comes in, so you can witness it and not take it on. Mm -hmm. And that's the key. So don't take it on. The other, the other, <laughs> unfortunately, and I get, I, I can't figure, I've tried, I've tried to figure out where along the pathway we've gone, where we've disconnected from our bodies. Mm. We, we pay more for our cars to be maintained than we do our bodies. That is crazy. <laughs> Isn't it? So I mean, that's a cool think of your body yeah. as a car, if you have to maintain it at least once every six months, which means maybe going to the doctor, maybe going to a massage therapist, chiropractor, Louisa or myself or something where you're actually taking care of your physical body and it's going to help you get from A to B. Yes. Let's not wait until B means that you're in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And then you have a real problem to undo because it's then layers and layers and layers of trauma or pain or compensations that have gone on. And it's just all encompassing and it, it doesn't go away. That's my point. It does not go away automatically. Just because you're avoiding it does not mean it's gone away. It means you have ingested it all into your physical body and your physical body is gonna rebel <laughs> at some point. It's gonna be a whisper and yeah. then it's gonna be a show. So, so true. Oh, so true. Well, I hope all our listeners are going to get in touch with you, Tina, because you just are, uh, you know, wealth of wisdom. And um, I know your clients are very, very lucky to, to work with you. And I know you also have a, an amazing gift for our listeners. Would you like to tell everyone a little bit about, about your free gift for everyone? Yes. So I created a um, guided meditation called releasing stress meditation. And it's about that simply 
Yes. So it's um, an energy infused. So there's healing as part of it, as well as going into the mind and working with the mind to help you be guided through the process of releasing and letting go of some of the stress that you carry throughout your day to day. And the heightened emotions need to be released. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, we're not meant to hold so many heightened emotions. And our stress levels, I can't even imagine the average uh, person's cortisol levels. It's just going to be skyrocketed over the last couple of years mm -hmm. with the pandemic and now with this. So mm -hmm. we've got to find ways, especially if we're type A personalities, not just to do the run. The run's good, but we need to do the decompression with yoga, our meditation, mm -hmm. quiet time, space, out in nature. It has to happen. And if we don't do it, it we're, the repercussions, unfortunately, are going to be really bad. Yeah, thank you so much for, for speaking to that. That's a, a, a mental note for everyone to take away as a little checklist of am I doing all of this? How am I taking care of my my body, the, the vehicle that I'm I'm living in? Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for sharing all your tips. There's so much that you've shared to help people to start to really understand what's going on, perhaps with their physical body, if their doctors aren't being able to give them some answers and also how uh, some of the diseases and pain may have been created in the in the first place as well how how can our listeners keep in touch with you how can they get in touch with you tina um i have a website it's tina's dash massage clinic.com i'm on facebook you can do uh facebook.com slash tina's clinic and i'm on linkedin LinkedIn slash in slash Tina a -hull because there's lots of us and unfortunately the other Tinas are not as nice as I, <laughs> I was just like oh my okay there's that's interesting <laughs> you're leading the way <laughs> yes yes Oh, fantastic. We'll pop the links below the below the podcast episode as well. So people can just just click on the links. Thank you so much for for joining us uh, today, Tina, and for sharing all your wisdom. It's been a complete honor to have you on the show. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And it's been a lot of fun. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Really looking forward to you joining us for our next episode. And until next time, sending you loads and loads of love. Thank you for being here. Namaste. Thanks for listening to the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. And if you like what you've heard and want to know more, please go to louisahavers.com. We just appreciate you so much. So thank you for listening and hanging out with us. If there's anything that we can do for you, you can email us at louisa at louisahavers.com. Let my team know if you have any ideas for shows that you'd love to hear or topics you want me to talk about. Really looking forward to hearing from you. All right, that is it for this week, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for today. Looking forward to connecting with you again. Until next time, namaste.